Yo! Wonderful! I think are you ready to spread some love and good vibes together with me here? Well, if you are, buckle up and hit the like button. Thank you very much even for clicking this video. You are indeed a wonderful soul. You see here we are about spreading love and good vibes, peace, forgiveness, honesty, unity, just uh, good vibes to humanity, you see? By reacting together to very many videos, try to understand how different humans live and think in different places. Wonderful soul, hit the like button and watch till the end so that you can uh, help one another in spreading love. I am your host Y311H. of Africa with lots of good vibes man. Let's dive in. Good vibes all the way. Oh man, this is a good start. Oh and you see here some uh, good vibes fellas from different breeds. One is um, Air Force, the other one is uh, for ground here. And these good vibes, they are just chilling together there spreading some love. You see? Uh, this is nice man. Oh, and they even go out there to bask in the sun and hang out together. Oh, you see this, uh, the Air Force One guy knows that uh, his friend on ground cannot go above. So he decides to chill with his friend on ground on their familiar runs, you see? So that they can uh, just chill as good vibes uh, creatures of man. And this is very interesting. This is nice, man. So this uh, Air Force person understands the one on ground uh, cannot go up there, you see? And they love them even with their weaknesses of uh, not being able to fly. And they are there spreading love. Oh, good vibes. This is incredible. You see? Oh, they even take some time there to play football and it's nice. It's good vibes, you see? Oh, that is uh, really nice. Good people of Earth, man. Thank you for clicking. Hmm. Was this buried by the great flood? You uh, see? Uh, look at this. Oh my god. Oh, good people of all. Why does this place uh, look like uh, some uh, ancient building? Yeah. Which flies are these people talking about? Maybe they know us or which one? I don't know, but if you are those about that, you see? And this is how a chameleon looks when changing color. Oh, you see, the, the creator of this universe was just incredible. Because imagining an animal like this one exists, that they can go somewhere and adapt the color of that place. Can you imagine that? This is just something uh, unbelievable. Can you even start to fathom that? Look at this. Oh my god. Yo, this is unbelievable. How is this stuff made? How? Oh, ho, ho, man. Look at this good people of Earth. Yo. How is this stuff made? Yo, ah, good people of Earth. Are you seeing this stuff? This is incredible, man. This is good vibes. Hey, you see, if this world has a, an animal like this one, and the way it's unique and good vibes and just incredible, then imagine the uniqueness and good vibes that humans have, you see? Only that sometimes they don't take uh, time to chill, sit back and admire one another and just love one another for being whom they are. Because we are all unique and lovely in different ways, you see? If this animal here can do this, man, imagine the stuff you yourself can do. Incredible stuff. You see, we are all created with the... Uh, we have the same formula, only that some of these creatures appeared different, you see? So it's good vibes. You should always love them and treat them well. With caring and just love, you see? You know, a lot of people... Christians will say, well, you know, to be saved, you, you claim Jesus is Lord. But Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do what I tell you to do? And his instructions to you were, first of all, before you do anything, seek within yourself for the kingdom. To find the kingdom within yourself. He said, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. That means if you meditate above the thoughts of the human mind. I wanted to share with... Um, with you a teaching of Jesus Christ and we're going to look at the deep mysticism of it because remember Jesus never taught but in a parable so all of his teachings are symbolic okay what does it symbolize what does it mean well in Matthew 13 verse 47 
Jesus comes around and he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good, but cast the bad away. So, what we are talking about is the kingdom of heaven because Jesus has already said the kingdom of heaven is within you. So he's saying it's like a net. So your consciousness then is being described as a net. See, when you cast your net into the sea, which is in your deep consciousness, your deep emotions, you're, you're going to collect all kinds of things, don't you? You get things that are good and things that are bad. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the human mind. See, the net is your will. The sea can either be your emotional nature, and you can drop your net there and get up a lot of bad thoughts, or it can be God's higher place. It can be God's place of deep truth. So, basically what we're going to look here, and, and I think what you're going to, if you'll follow me, you'll see what Jesus is teaching us, that the kingdom of heaven is consciousness. If you're happy, it's heaven. If you're, if you're mad, if you're fearful, if you're depressed, it's hell. It's that simple. And dropping the net into consciousness is simply bringing up thoughts. Some good, some bad. How many times have you, have you heard somebody said or have you said to somebody, you have to drag all that old stuff up? That's what he's talking about. See? But Jesus says, if you want to bring up fish, in other words, fish in the Bible is spiritual wisdom. It's of God. If you want to catch fish, Jesus gets very specific about it, and you'll see it in John 21.6. He says, cast the net, that means your will, on the right side. And what he's talking about there is direct your energy to the right hemisphere of the brain. Direct your energy to the right hemisphere of your mind. And he says, you shall find. Now remember in Matthew 7, 7, Jesus says, seek and you shall find. Find what? You, you've, been, you've been going to church all of your life and you've been seeking and trying to find. And, and for most, the, life is still a perplexing mystery. What am I here for? What am I doing? And things are chaos. But Jesus said to them as they were fishing, see, now this is all symbolic, because he wasn't talking to them fishing, he's talking to you who are trying to fish into the life's deep sea and try to come up with something that's meaningful. He says, cast your net over to the right side. And when they did, it says they, they had so many fish they couldn't contain the net. See, the ancient Kabbalah, which is the eastern works of the ancient rabbis from the desert, says that God has his dwelling place in the great sea and is a fish therein. That's why, do you remember, the story of, um, of uh, Jonah is very, very Eastern, very mystic. That's why the fish swallowed him. Well, when did the fish swallow Jonah? When he was off the boat. When, when he couldn't steer the boat, when he couldn't row the boat. In other words, when he could not control his own destiny. That's meditation. When he gave up everything that is of himself and he was floundering around in that uncharted sea, then the fish, God, can swallow him up. In other words, that was saying the only time God can really take you is when you've given up on yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you've given up life. That doesn't mean you've given up seeking. It means you've given up that which is the self, that which is the ego, that which is the flesh. It's been crucified, okay? So fish, then, in the Bible and mysticism are, are impulses that are active in the higher mind, and they become part of you as, you as you drop your net into the deep sea of God. Now, I wanted to show you something very interesting. How do we know that this is talking about consciousness and not talking about Jesus showing people how to fish, actually, you know, real fish, a real boat, real, real water. How do we know that this is talking about consciousness? There's a way you can tell. In Sanskrit, which is the ancient language of, of, of uh, Hindu and moved into the Hebrew language, in Sanskrit, the numerical value of the number of Adam, now, you remember in ancient Hebrew, to all of the words, all of the letters have a numerical value. The numerical value of the word Adam is nine. Nine. Nine in the Bible then takes on the meaning of consciousness. It means human consciousness, the carnal mind. Okay, our flesh, you know, our our being is nine. Consciousness. Now the ancients in mysticism applied this so that you can identify once you have the key some of the things that have perplexed Christians and non Christians alike for many years. The identity of the beast. The identity of the of the beast is six. Six, six. Six plus six plus six equals 18. Now this is the way they did it. One plus eight equals nine. It's consciousness. The beast is consciousness. 
The beast is that thing that talks to you, that frightens you, that depresses you, that makes you angry, that makes you panic. That within you, that consciousness, the lower consciousness is the beast. 666-18 equals 9. It says in Revelation 14 that 144,000 are going to heaven. Well, that doesn't mean 144,000. This is mystical. It's saying 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals 9. That means consciousness on the higher level. Going to heaven is a higher level of consciousness. Going to hell or with the beast is a lower level of consciousness. They both map out at the number 9. Oh man, that's some um, interesting dude there. What do you think? It's an impressive shot, isn't it? it? Appears to show the sun setting down below the clouds. But it's actually proof of a globe Earth. You see, if the sun actually was setting below the clouds as you see here, it would mean that the sun is very tiny and very local. Underneath the sun is always noon. So that means noon is right over there. Do the people that are right over there have the same clouds? And do the people who are noon right over there look up and see a gigantic sun right above them? What about the people over here? Or what about the people over here? It would be noon over there too, but the sun wouldn't be above them? How high up is the sun right now? It's below the clouds, so it has to be around 30,000 feet maximum. This is proof of a globe. Ha! Huh. The network is disturbing a video which was allegedly shot on January 8, 2024 in Washington. On video, the same you spoke as the one that flew in a viral video with a cock truck. Hey, let's see this. I hadn't seen that one of a cock truck, but let's see this one. Oh my god! This one is crazy! What is this now? Everyone does not even hide in this. Uh, they are easily visible. Good people of us. Is this some real stuff or what do you think is going on? Yeah? A little secret information from a hidden meaning in the Bible. If I got a direct line to the Father, I'm going to obey Jesus Christ and go right to Him. I don't need, even need Jesus to pray to. It's in the Bible, my friends, and it's something you haven't been told. It's something that's never been revealed to you. That doesn't make it not so. It's in the Bible. But it's been hidden from you because if you find that God is in you, what do you need all this church stuff for? And you don't. What you need is to come to grips with yourself and the kingdom within you, which is the higher consciousness. And once you lift yourself into the higher consciousness, that's when you God. Have you ever felt there's a secret key capable of unlocking the life you've always dreamed of? What if someone told you that the clues to finding this code are scattered throughout history, waiting to be discovered? Today, we'll explore one of the texts that has most intrigued scholars and truth seekers, the Gospel of Thomas, and one of its deepest teachings that the kingdom of God is within you and all around you. This idea that divinity and power reside within us mirrors modern concepts such as the law of attraction and the law of assumption, which suggests that our thoughts and feelings have the power to manifest reality. But how does this ancient text correlate with these laws? Stay with us as we unravel these ancient mysteries and secrets the rediscovery of Gnostic texts in the 20th century, including the Gospel of Thomas, marked a milestone in understanding the origins of Christianity and ancient spiritual beliefs. Discovered in 1945 near Nag Hammadi in Egypt, the Gospel of Thomas stands out as a compilation of sayings attributed to Jesus. Unlike the canonical Gospels, this text focuses on Jesus' teachings, rather than on the events of his life. The location and archaeological context of the discovery are not mere historical details. They are fundamental to our understanding of the preservation and transmission of ancient knowledge. This finding highlights the existence of a community that deeply valued these teachings to the extent of hiding them to protect from destruction. It underlines the importance of these texts as testimonies of the resilience of spiritual thought. Among its most striking teachings, we find the assertion that the kingdom of God is not found in physical structures, but within and around us. If you split a piece of wood, I am there, lift a stone, and you will find me. 
This powerful idea deeply resonates with the modern notion that divinity and creative power reside within each of us, a fundamental principle for understanding the law of attraction. It suggests that our thoughts and emotions are capable of shaping our reality. But how does this ancient document relate to the law of assumption? The Gospel reveals that by harmonizing our thoughts and feelings, we have the ability to move mountains. This poetic expression suggests that, by aligning our internal vibration with what we desire, the universe becomes receptive to our intentions. When the Gospel of Thomas was accidentally discovered in Egypt by a group of workers, we could not have imagined that this discovery would unveil ancient secrets. As they dug, they stumbled upon not just any find, but an early Christian tomb. Inside, they found a large jar containing 13 leather-bound manuscripts, encompassing 48 distinct texts. Most of these texts belong to Gnosticism, a stream that views salvation as a journey of enlightenment through esoteric knowledge. Among these manuscripts was the Gospel of Thomas, offering a unique interpretation of the human spiritual quest. According to Gnosticism, we are essentially souls in physical bodies, longing to ascend through true wisdom. In this context, Jesus is seen as the bearer of light, the guide who comes to offer liberation from ignorance, revealing deep truths to an intimate circle of disciples, including Thomas. Interestingly, as we explore various spiritual paths, we notice a convergence towards the same idea. This idea suggests that the inclusion of such teachings in the contemporary biblical canon could have broadened our understanding of the latent potential within each being. In an approach that significantly departs from conventional narratives, the Gospel of Thomas offers a perspective that can be both revealing and challenging. This text suggests that true understanding and personal power emerge not from blind adherence to doctrines, but from introspection and recognition of the individual's ability to shape the reality around them. Assimilating these ideas, the reader may experience a kind of epiphany, recognizing the power they have to transform their existence into a manifestation of the divine here on earth. Unlike the canonical texts, the Gospel of Thomas presents a portrayal of Jesus that diverges from the one traditionally propagated by the New Testament, raising critical questions among religious leaders. It is known today that at least 45 books were completely removed or extensively modified, giving rise to what we now know as the Western biblical tradition. These modifications erased fundamental teachings about the interconnection of everything and the language that articulates this universal connection. The exclusion of these teachings raises the following question. Were they rejected due to a lack of authenticity or because they represented universal truths that were deliberately hidden from predominant narratives? What interests lie behind their exclusion? This selectivity delivers us limited spiritual knowledge, overlooking the revolutionary idea that we all share the same divine power that Jesus manifested. Power shouldn't be seen as something external and frightening, but as an intrinsic part of our essence. Recognizing this unity could have completely transformed our perception of life throughout history. Our diversity does not separate us. We are all expressions of a single consciousness manifesting in distinct ways. Yeah, man. Oh, that's interesting. What do you think? And then there's this footage here. What do you think is this good people of us? Hey, uh, do you think uh, this is a mermaid, a siren, or one of those? But what do you think? Leave your comments. To say this is for entertainment purposes and uh, we need one another's help to understand this stuff also, you see? Well, if you had a bunker, this is what you would come up to. The grass is run back over it. There's a special lock right here that you have to reach your hand into. And then the hatch pretty much open up on its own. Uh, we're actually going down in a shelter. Hasn't been walked into in about two months. This is 20 feet underground. All right. So 
when you walk into your shelter, this is what you'd find after a month. It has everything you'd have in a big RV that's 50 feet long. Only difference is this is going to be buried 20 feet underground. The hatch to her bunker is hidden inside this little tool shed. And uh, this is the only person in America that likes to show her bunker to the news and the media. So, okay. Oh, so you don't even have a lock on it right now? No. Okay. Okay, so we're now about 20 feet underground here. Okay. I put these doors in. Oh, wow. Oh, and they bifold? So she, she has a uh, composting toilet. Have you ever noticed the temperature down here is, is below freezing outside? It's the same. What, what temperature is it staying here like? Between 59 and 63 degrees. Really? So it never gets cold or hot? No, it doesn't change. Same. Okay, and then, then there's your shower. So then you've got your private bunk room here. And they went with camo. You got a secondary door that opens into... Now, this is a 26-foot bunker? Yeah. Okay. I fulfill that fantasy of people wanting a place to bug out. So that's what I do. Let's start off with a smaller bunker and let's get bigger because I want the climax of this video to blow your people's minds because the bunker that we do at the end is unfreaking real, okay? okay so cool. we'll start off here with kind of a smaller bunker, which you might think is pretty big. So what we're going in right now is what's called a culvert uh, pipe bomb shelter. So the way it works is uh, this, this area right here is called a mud room. So people actually, they come down a stair right here uh, this is the mud room. They can disrobe this. You got more storage in here. There's a shower in here for decontamination. They would shower off and then they would go into the bunker and then they would close this door behind them and they would be locked in. So when you step in, you've got your shower and your toilet. So this is a regular flushing toilet. This thing right here is what's called the overpressure blast valve. What happens is when the pressure builds up in the bunker, this actually opens like an air drum and it lifts the air out. It will let the smell out right there. So that was just engineering. That's why they call it the head. Same as on a boat. They put the toilet at the head so everyone doesn't smell it. So the head basically is the rear end of the boat. So when they're going into the wind and the guy does his business, it, it goes that way. Yeah. So okay, then we're in the bunker. So when we get in the bunker, we close the door. Okay? And we lock it down. And that's gas pipe. That will protect us from all the biological, the chemical agents. So this is one of the signature things on all the outlet shelters is that we have these gas type doors. This is like the bunk room right here. So people would be sleeping here and you've got storage under each one of the bunks. There's four bunks right here. Another thing that's very cool is all these bunkers have, they got storage underneath the floor. The so down here, we put our water yeah, tanks, this? our food, our lithium batteries, extra solar panels, backup, microwaves. People love this pipe because you can get 55 gallon water barrels under the floor. So there's three feet of storage underneath the floor here. And you can put all your water barrels, all your food, your backup supplies. Now this also has a door in the room so you can close it and have your privacy in here. Open it up, you're into the living area. This has a four-person dinner table. It's the same footprint as uh, the Denny's restaurants. That's where I copied it from. You actually have storage underneath the seat. You also have storage underneath this TV right down here. This cabinet actually lifts up. You've got your entertainment center with electric fireplace. There's your leather couch, your uh, kitchen. You've got a t desk over here that has two chairs. You also can put your cameras and your radios over here. Refrigerator, freezer, full kitchen, and even a master bedroom in your bomb shelter. So this master bedroom in this one here is 14 feet long, but also in the master bedroom is the heart and soul of the bunker, which is the NBC air filtration system. And the way this works, all you do is you press that button right there, this turns on, and it's blowing a lot of wind. Look at this. I mean, this, oh, look at <laughs> Yeah. Um, without this, you wouldn't be able to breathe underground. This is a carbon filter with a HEPA filter, and the carbon and HEPA filter will take out the radioactive matter. It will clean out any biological matter and any chemical agents. So, Bunkers are designed to withstand artillery with chemical warfare, mustard gas, whatever, even biological warfare. If I was to unhook these two clamps and hook this up to here and this one up to here, it's an air raid siren. That sounds like it. Good to hear that? Okay, that's an air raid siren right there. Okay. <laughs> oh man, this uh, stuff is incredible. Why would people build those stuff? Yeah? Cut this one. Oh, this one looks like a whale. What, what do you call this animal? Good people or bad? Huh? Looks like some big good vibes fish that uh, just came to the show here. What do you think he's trying to tell us? Is this a sign or what's up? This looks like it is hot. Oh my god. Oh man. And then there's this. What is this floating stuff here in the mid air? Oh my god. What is this? This is another crazy technology. Good people of us. Look at this. What do you think this is? Hey. What is this object made of? How can it do this? Is it defying gravity or it does not recognize gravity? What's going on? I look at these objects, good people of earth. 
Hey, looks like a big floating metals. Are those drones or what's up? Oh my god. And then there's this footage from some place here. Oh, looks like footage from the past. Are those pyramids or what's that? Hey, some UFOs. This is some crazy stuff, man. Did you see that stuff that was passing up there? Look at it. Oh, it does not look like a plane. It looks creepy. What is this thing? Oh my god. This is unbelievable. Oh. Incredible Adrix. Can you hit the like button if you have watched up to this far? And can you also leave your comments? You see, they are very useful because that way stuff like this cannot be dazzling our mind and we are the whole world. You see? If people from the whole world unite and then there is the comment section, we can have a lot of solutions to problems that we see in modern life, you see? And you can also come up with incredible stuff and the solutions to just the everything we see around, you see? That way we can also spread love together. Or what do you think? Yo, how to tell if your marbles are real? Huh? And the real marbles, uh, how do they crack? They crack like this, or how does it go down? Huh? Oh! Okay, this is good vibes. Did you know that uh, about marbles, good people of art? Huh? Oh! Just, they look nice! Hmm! Oh man, oh, and this is how you attach them. How do, what do you use to attach your marbles? No, I don't know, man. Oh, and if you try to break them, what goes on? Oh, they become loose. What is this good vibes guy here trying to do? Break some marbles or what? Huh? Do you think this is the real one? I doubt. I don't think this is real. Oh, it's just some stuff there that was covered with uh, some stuff also. And to pretend that it is a marble. Why would people do this? Yeah? But this is a good thing and uh, just any people the truth. And then more news that has to do with planes. This is the latest one, you guys. Check this video out. Hey, it's Elle from PS Bring Your Passport. And in this video, we're watching the final moments of 30-year-old Kyle Effinger at Salt Lake City Airport. Apparently, Kyle was trying to board a flight to Denver to visit his sick grandfather, but he missed his flight. In other video from the airport, we can see Kyle dropping all of his belongings shortly after clearing security and running towards the gate. As you can see, this gate is pretty empty, so he missed it by a long shot, but he still is trying to make the flight, so he runs down these stairs barefoot before he breaches the tarmac. I don't know how he was able to do this, but he runs towards his Delta flight, which is already in motion. Unfortunately, Kyle tragically died because he was sucked into the engine of the plane. His family has released a statement, which I will leave in the caption of this video, and his funeral is this Thursday, February 1st. You see what I'm saying, y'all? People are losing their minds. They're going crazy to lose your life over a flight, a flight when you could have catch the next one. I understand the act of wanting to visit your grandpa and all that, but now it looks like your grandpa is going to be visiting you. All I'm saying, you guys, is please be careful out there because the energy that's raining upon us right now is an erratic type of energy. And the people that cannot contain this energy will be behaving in erratic-like fashion. So please protect your energies out there. Keep your vibrations high. Go out in nature. Ground yourself. Because you grounding yourself is you actually grounding that energy into that ground saying you don't need that negative energy. So let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. You already know what to do, y'all. Keep up with me on my other accounts, especially on my YouTube, where I go deeper on the esoteric level with these topics. Let's get this shift, y'all. Peace in. Yo, good people of God. There's crazy stuff happening in this earth during these times. You see? A lot of crazy stuff. And this is really why we need... To support one another through loving and caring and checking up on one another and always being forgiving you see that way if we unite all this mad stuff and the chaos going on around we can reduce it at a very high level and even end it if possible you see that way those that shall come after us the future of tomorrow you see they shall remember civilization that was once full of love and good will and they lived like one people despite their differences in color and all that you see how wouldn't it be good like that? Imagine your uh, grandchildren coming later on this earth 
And hearing that their grandparents were involved in some movement of spreading love, wouldn't that be nice? It would be great good people of us. So wonderful, Andres. Always hit the like button. Leave comments there. Tell us where you are watching from. You see, activity is there and it will be good vibes to everybody. Now from wherever you are watching from. I wish you luck. I wish you good vibes. I wish you head. And I wish you lots of blessings from God, you see. And everything will be okay from wherever you are. Peace and love, man. Big up to Josie. Big up to Justin Song. Gina DMC. Big up to Minimalist. Hey, yeah, yeah. Who else, my friend? Uh, George yes. Jr. Only Jedi. And the only Jedi. And the Baba Varage Joe. Toto Deck. And Toto Deck. Wow, all those guys, man. All of you. You are loved and respected. Much love to yourself, man. And even to those that have clicked today. What do you tell them? We love them. Ah, we love you guys, all of you. And much love. Big up, man. Feel welcome. Bye-bye.